let us prepare our hearts for worship with the lighting of the Christ candle. Our call to worship's on the PowerPoint, and if you were here last week, it will sound familiar. Give thanks to the Holy One, for God is good. With hosanna and praise, we greet the one who calls us. This is a day that God has made. I invite you to stand if you're able and wave your palm branches high as we sing our opening hymn, 214. All glory, laud, and honor. be seated. Let us come before our God and let us pray. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, the time has come for us to once again wave our palm branches high as we ready ourselves to enter into Holy Week, where we bear witness to the great love that you have for us and come to celebrate the wonders of the empty tomb as we hear once more the good news that Christ is risen. As we ready ourselves for what is still yet to come, we take the time this morning to offer up to you our prayers of adoration. For you alone are the reason for our celebration, the reason why we're able to rejoice today, because you are a God who keeps his promise. For you are the one who gave us his only son, so the world could be saved through him. 
So we ask that you would accept our sacrifice of prayer and praise. Creator God, we praise you this morning for your steadfast love that you have shown to your people from the dawning of creation. For first you created a world and called it good. Then you claimed for yourself a people who would be charged to go out into the world and make it good for all people. We praise you, Lord, that even when your chosen people stumbled away from your path, you called them to continue to walk with you. You refused to turn your back to them, instead sending your Holy Spirit to rest upon your chosen leaders and prophets, to call out to invite your people back to you. Even when your people were sent into exile, you chose to go with them so they would know that they're not abandoned, as even in exile you shepherd your people. And it was to those who were in exile you first gave a life-giving promise, that when the time was right, you would give to the world the long-awaited Messiah, the one who had come to set all people free. We praise you, loving God, that when the time was right, you sent an angel to Mary to let her know that she would bring the long-awaited Messiah into the world, a child that was born of the Holy Spirit, the one who would be the salvation of all of God's people. We praise you, Lord, that Jesus became for us the Messiah we needed, rather than the one we thought we wanted. For Jesus came to serve rather than lord over people. He offered mercy and forgiveness rather than a sword. And for our sake, he willingly chose the crown of thorns so that we could receive the crown of glory. We shall never stop praising you, holy God, that for our sake Jesus went to the cross so that we would never have to feel the pain of being separated from you, our great creator. And we continue to praise you for the promise of the empty tomb and the knowledge of the power of death has been defeated forever. We praise you, Lord, that you are still not yet finished with our world or the people who call it home. For you entrusted to us the power of the Holy Spirit and we've now been blessed to be able to go out into the world and serve as Jesus' hands and feet. All this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters in faith, welcome to Paul Memorial on this still beautiful first Sunday in spring. And I can say that it is still beautiful, because I remember other first Sundays in spring when it was minus 45. So when you look at it that way, it is gorgeous out today. But I'm so glad you could join us for our Palm Sunday service. We have a few announcements about light events going on at the church. First of all, we would like to thank everyone who brought their donations for our March month of mission. All of the donations will be going to Our Lady of Guadalupe Church Food Bank today. Today is the last day to drop off your donations as we want to make sure it gets to the families before Easter. However, there is another opportunity for mission in the church. And this time, all we need is for you to be willing to speak. We're looking for members of our con congregation who live their faith outside of these walls. So if you're part of a charitable organization, and would like to come and share how that has impacted your life and how you're able to show God's love to those around us, we'd love to hear from you. There's a sign-up sheet on the fellowship board where you can take five minutes and share your mission with the congregation. A reminder from the pie ladies, if you ordered turkey pies last week, they are now available for pickup. They are asking if you will come after the service before you go for tea and coffee to pick up your pies. They would greatly appreciate it. 
And the next women's breakfast will be on Saturday, April the 6th at 9 a.m. at LA Town Grill in LaSalle. There's a sign-up sheet on the fellowship board. We have a new Bible study happening. Some of you may or may not have heard of this wonderful show called The Chosen. I've just started watching it and I'm hooked. <laughs> and what it is, it is a tell telling of how Christ affected the people around them. So there is a fict fictional aspects to it, but the scripture is real, what Jesus does is real, but it allows us to fill in the gaps of what Peter was like before he met Jesus. What was Mary Magdalene's life before she met Jesus? And it, you're able to place yourself in the shoes of these characters and discover for yourself how life can be changed once we meet with Christ. So if you're interested in coming, we're going to have our first Bible study on 17th, April 17th after the community dinner. So you can come for an amazing dinner. You can come for an amazing study. And you can just discover how life can change when you're one of the chosen who walk with God. Uh, one last thing that's not in, the bulletin, or not in the PowerPoint, but I'm going to remind you, if you look in your bulletin, there is a list of all of our Holy Week worship because we are now into Holy Week. This means on Thursday at 6 p.m. we will be having a Monday Thursday service. Due to the request of many members in our congregation, we'll be having the Christian Passover meal. Please note that this is not a full meal. Think of it as sort of a tasting meal, where you get to taste a little bit of how the story, how the food helps tell the story of our salvation. On Good Friday, we have our traditional come early and get hot cross buns and coffee, and then walk around the neighborhood with the cross. Or if you wish to just come for the service, it's at 11 o'clock. And then a week from today is Easter Sunday. Apparently, I do not have the power to make that a week later. I tried. But next week will be Easter Sunday, so we'll have worship at 10.30 as usual. And now I invite you to stand, if you're able, as we sing our children's hymn, 377. Come, children, join to sing. to invite the children to come up for a special children's time. Come on up, everybody.
So is everybody having a good day today? Yeah. Does it feel like spring? Yeah. Not really. It's a little bit cold. Yeah. And spring's a little bit early this year. But do you know why we celebrate spring now? Because it's coming to spring. Yeah. yeah. Well, the reason why spring moves around is it's decided by a lunar calendar. Oh, yeah, lunar calendar. Okay, so a solar calendar is what we usually follow. So that's why we know Christmas Day is always January or December 25th. <laughs> I think I might just lose my license over that one. <laughs> or why your birthday is always the same day every year. Because in a, in a solar calendar, the dates don't move. However, in a lunar calendar, they move every year. Because in a solar calendar, dates usually are, a month is usually 30 to 31 days, except for February. But in a lunar calendar, they're 21 days because it's a cycle of the moon. From full moon to full moon is about 21 days. And so that's why spring and Easter move every year because they're both tied to a very important celebration in the Jewish faith. Yeah, Easter comes first and then it's summer. But Easter follows a Jewish tradition called Passover. Have any of you guys ever heard that word before? Yes. Yeah? Where did you hear that word? In the Bible. And Passover is a very important celebration in the Bible because it's when we remember that God saved his people while they were slaves in Egypt. And so every year, people tell that story. They tell the story about how long ago God saved his people. And actually, our Palm Sunday comes from the celebration of Passover because people were coming into the city to celebrate this special meal, and they would greet each other by saying, Hosanna, and blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. So they were saying, Blessed are you because God has saved you. And the blessed are you because God one day is going to save you again. And so they held on to this promise that God was going to save them. Little did they know on that day that Jesus was God's answer to their prayers of salvation. That Jesus was going to come and save his people by being the last Passover lamb, the one who would die to take away everyone's sins and then rise again into new life. So that's why Easter moves around, because Passover moves around. And it's a time when we celebrate that God has saved us, and God continues to save us every day, reminding us that we're loved, reminding us that our mistakes are forgiven, and reminding us that there is a special place for him in his home. And so it's good for us to remember the many ways that God saves us. So I'm going to invite you guys to go back to your pews because we have new members joining us today because they want to celebrate the fact that God has saved them. So if you guys want to head, up to your, head back to your pews, and then after the new members' service, you can go down with Miss Audrey for Sunday school. Christian friends, Janie, Kathy, Mike, Heather, and Nancy Carl have been baptized as members of the body of Christ. They have been nurtured within the Christian community, instructed in the beliefs and practice of the church. In making a public profession of their faith, they desire to affirm their baptism, to claim their rights associated with membership in the Congregation of Paul and Memorial. Today, we also have people joining our church via transfer, Valerie, Linda, and Terry. 
Remember, God washes us clean by forgiving our sins, commissioning us to be a royal priesthood with Christ and his ministry in the world, empowering us to live in the newness of life as his people, and invites us to be renewed at the Lord's table till we feast in him in glory. By grace, you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing, but is the gift of God. So I'd like to invite the people who will be joining Paul in via confession of faith to join me at the front of the church. Janine, Kathy, Mike, Heather, and Nancy, you stand before God in the company of God's people to affirm the covenant God has made with you at your baptism, to acknowledge your growth in grace, and to assume the responsibilities as a disciple of Christ in this congregation in the world. Are you ready to make your public profession of faith? Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, who has been faithful to us in all generations, do you turn away from sin, renounce evil and all its powers in the world, which rebel against God, or oppose God's rule of justice and love? If so, say, I renounce them. Amen. Do you renounce the way of sin which separates you from the love of God? If so, say, I renounce them. Amen. Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love, if so, say, I do. Amen. Do you desire independence in the Holy Spirit to mature as Christians, to seek the guidance of Christ as you listen to his word, to celebrate his death and life, the table he provides, and to engage in his mission to the world? If so, say, I do. Amen. Then let us all, as the people of God, stand and confess our, the faith of the church, if you are able. And the answers will be on the PowerPoint. That's okay. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, most gracious God, that you have given us the gift of baptism through water and spirit. You have claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You called your church to be your servants in the world in the name of Jesus Christ, and you promised to be present among your people by the power of your Holy Spirit. We now thank you for your faithfulness to us, and for these, your children who came to renew your covenant of baptism. By the power of your Holy Spirit, continue in them the good work you have already begun. They may willingly serve you in love and joy, in courage and truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Janine, Kathy, Mike, Heather, Nancy, Terry, Valerie, and Linda, may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you too may abound in hope. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Now I invite the members to take the right hand of fellowship, the left hand of celebration, and bring them together. <laughs> and then Audrey has some things to help you remember today. You may be seated. Oh, it's a joy too.
join your church. Oh, we're, we're so happy to have you guys. guys can go return to okay, your seats. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning. So uh, I'm glad to see everybody wearing their name tags. I'm Anne McLaughlin. Uh, and today I'm gonna read the mission uh, moment to start with. Following Christ's example to care for the brokenhearted and those crushed in spirit, Anima Wigma Kore uh, Kenora Fellowship Center provides care and support for people who have endured intergenerational trauma and profound loss and grief in their lives. The center promotes healthy grieving practices that include sharing circles and memorial fires, creating a safe space for a time of prayer, sharing sorrow and mourning the loss of loved ones. The community has come to value the importance of the sacred fire teachings and the warmth and comfort it offers, welcoming all to come just as they are. Now let us uh, bow our heads in prayer as we pray, pray the prayer of illumination. Prepare our hearts, O God, to hear your word and to obey your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now reading from the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. 
and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. Thank you, choir and Heather. That was lovely. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Growing up in the church, I always loved Palm Sunday. It was one of the few times when we, as the children of the church, were encouraged to be loud. As our minister would always tell us, that we need to make our song of praise so loud that it echoes throughout the church. After all, it's not every day the long-awaited Messiah comes into the city of God. I also learned that it's the Sunday that many ministers dread, because you have to keep finding a new way to tell the same story. That same minister that encouraged us to be loud is also the minister who infamously told the, story, the palm story story from the view of the donkey. And a fellow minister looked and said, that was an interesting sermon given by a... And he wasn't talking about the donkey. But even though I still love Palm Sunday, I remember waving my palm branches in the air as if Jesus himself might join in the celebration. And then when the adults weren't looking, 
our branches magically transformed into swords or other things that we could use to entertain ourselves, as the adults had to listen to the minister go on and on. But now that I'm a little bit older, Palm Sunday still holds that special place in my heart because it reminds me of the wonderful way that God chose to answer the prayers of his people, who once again cried out for salvation. Now, it's important for us to remember that Jesus isn't entering into Jerusalem on any given day, but rather his final entry into the city of God happens during the most holy time of the year for the Jewish people. For Jesus entered into Jerusalem in the days leading up to Passover. The season of Passover was and still is an important holiday in the Jewish faith. It's a celebration that centers around a meal which retells the story of how God saved his people while they were slaves in Egypt. Each part of the meal tells a story that is central from the bitter herbs to remember the sorrow of those who were enslaved, to the lamb that was sacrificed, so the Israels who were held captive could paint their frames and their homes with its blood, so the angel of death would pass over their homes, and instead only visit those who stood against God's will. This was a story of how God had saved his people in the past, and it also represented the promise that God would again cause something similar to happen in the days still yet to come, when God's people were in great need for salvation. This is part of the reason why there was such a great crowd of people gathered to welcome Jesus into the city. Some would have been there because they wanted to see this Jesus that people were talking about, the man who had done great things, healing the sick, raising the dead, eating with sinners. And others there were the hoping that this Jesus would be the one who would come to save their people, that he would raise up a great army to kick the Romans out. And then some were there because it was tradition. It's tradition during the Passover season to welcome people into the city with words of welcome and praise. For the words that were offered up to Jesus and his followers, the words that you and I echo each Palm Sunday, they're the traditional words of welcome to those coming to celebrate the Passover. Hosanna in the highest. Our God has saved us. So let the world bear witness to this truth. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you that come to celebrate the Passover, as long ago Jesus saved you from the cruelty of slavery. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. We are blessed because we know God is with us, and God has promised us the gift of a coming Messiah. This simple statement of greeting summarizes the very essence of what it means to celebrate Passover. For their God had saved them in the past, and because they belong to the Lord, they are blessed. But also, one day soon, God will save his people again. This is why, as part of the Passover service, there's a moment where they open the door ready to welcome Elijah into the meal, as scripture foretold that he would return before the Messiah came to live among God's people. I can't help but wonder how many people on that first Palm Sunday so long ago knew that they were welcoming the one who would answer their Passover prayers. For there was Jesus riding on a donkey listening to the prayers of his people, hearing them cry out for salvation once more, hiding their prayer in plain sight as they welcome stranger and friend into the city of God, as each time they cried out, Hosanna, 
They were asking God to save them once more as they felt enslaved to past mistakes, enslaved to what with time had become an overly legalistic religion that placed so many barriers between God and his people, that they felt so enslaved because they no longer knew how to move forward and just felt stuck. All of these prayers and so many more were hidden behind the prayers of God's people. Just like many of us today offer up our own unspoken prayers as we shout to the heavens, Hosanna, our cries of God save me because I am not able to do it myself. On that day so long ago, Jesus heard the cries of his people. He heard their pleads for salvation, asking God to save them from the power and the pain of this passing world. And then later on in the evening, once the Passover meal had been shared, and Jesus and his followers left the table and went to the gardens in Gethsemane, were invited to hear Jesus' response to all the prayers of his people. As Jesus moves away from his followers and falls down on his knees before God and asks the Lord, can you find another way? In that moment in the garden, Jesus is lifting up to the Lord his own broken prayer of Hosanna asking God to save him from what is still yet to come. Luke tells us that Jesus prayed so hard that night that his sweat fell like blood, and an angel of the Lord had to come and give him strength to stay the course. As Jesus time and time again begs God to find another way to answer the prayers of God's people, to find another way to bring about the salvation they were craving, a way that wouldn't include the arrest, the trial, the suffering, and the cross. In the garden on the night before he was betrayed, we see Jesus being fearful of what is yet to come. For he asked God to take away the cup of suffering that it will soon be placed before him because he's afraid, afraid of what will happen. It's hard to find the words to describe what Jesus was going through in the Garden of Gethsemane, because thankfully, and thanks to him, I have never been in a similar situation. But I've always found it so amazing the strength that Jesus showed on that night so long ago, because at any moment, Jesus could have left the garden. He could have snuck out while his followers were fast asleep and be anywhere else when Judas came to betray him. But he didn't. Instead, he bowed his head in prayer and asked God if there was another way. And when he was told there was not, that there was no other way to fully answer the prayers of God's people. Jesus then decided to give voice to one last prayer, the hardest prayer in the world to say, then let your will and not mine be done. In that moment, Jesus committed to God's plan to bring about the salvation of his people, knowing that this was the only way that not only the people of Israel could be saved from all that held them hostage, but also the only way that you and I and everyone else could be saved. For in order for that to happen, Jesus had to allow himself to become the new Passover lamb, the one that would take away the sins of the world so that our cries of Hosanna could be answered. 
Jesus' prayers had to be denied so that through his death and resurrection, we could be brought into a newness of life with our great creator. For our sake, Jesus chose to drink that cup of sorrow so that in return, you and I could drink deeply from the cup of salvation. For our sake, Jesus chose to stay. He chose the pain of the cross so that our prayers could be answered, not in the way we expected, but in the only way that could change our world forever. For out of love for you and I, Jesus became for us the final Passover lamb, the one that would forever defeat the power of sin and death. Even though he was scared, even though he was reluctant, Jesus did this for all of us so that God could once again save his people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us continue singing praises to God with three, hymn number 389, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Please be seated. Let us once again come before God and let us pray. Hosanna and hallelujah. With our palm branches in hand, we come before you, loving God, ready to lift our voice in a prayer of thanksgiving as we remember and celebrate the many countless ways that our life and our world has been transformed for the better because of your endless love and mercy. So we ask that you would once again listen to your children praying. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for our newest church members, for those who are willing to stand before you and confess their faith in the living God. We thank you, Lord, for each and every person your Holy Spirit leads our way, for the wonderful gifts they bring that help Holland Memorial to grow and to become the great church you know we can become. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful gift of knowing that you are a God who answers prayers. On this Sunday, when we shout Hosanna in the highest, we know that we are blessed because we worship a God who walks with his people, one who refuses to turn a blind eye to their needs, as time after time you've reached out your hand in mercy 
to raise up the downtrodden, to bring healing to the sick, and promising everlasting life to those who fear death. We thank you, Lord, for the great gift, for we know that you are always with us, no matter what. We give you thanks today, loving God, for the gift of Jesus. As we remember his time in the garden, we thank you, Lord, for the strength you gave to your only son, so that even though he longed to avoid drinking the cup of sorrow, he did for our sake, so that we could be spared. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the cross, but also for the empty tomb, for they remind us of how much you love us. Because, you're, because you love us, there is nothing, not even death itself, that can separate us from you, our Heavenly Father. This time, loving God, we now turn our thoughts and prayers to the world around us, trusting that you will listen to all that keeps us up late at night. Holy Lord, we pray once more for the people in Gaza. As national reports proclaim they are now suffering a famine, as there's not enough help able to make its way to where it is needed. Father, we confess that this is a hard topic to talk about, for on one hand, we want justice for those who lost their life in the first attack, but we also see the devastation that is happening to innocent families who are caught in the crosshairs. So, Lord, we ask that you would intercede and bring healing to the land where Jesus once walked, Help us to see those who need help rather than only focusing on those who caused harm. Lord, we pray today for the people in Russia who have been affected by that horrible attack at a theater. Father, we cannot comprehend why anyone would do such a thing. And so we pray for those who have lost a loved one, for those who are physically hurt, and for those who will carry the mental wounds all their life. Lord, help us to put aside our weapons and instead seek to build peace. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our nation who are often overlooked. We pray today for our First Nation brothers and sisters who live in the northern part of our nation, who are stumbling with problems that many Canadians no longer even think about. We pray for the communities that are struggling with tuberculosis and outbreaks. We ask that you would soften the heart of our political leaders so they will give them the aid that they have been promising them for years. And yet nothing has happened to help these communities to heal and stop the spread. Lord, help us, we pray, to remember that we're called to care for all people, not only those in our neighborhood, but those whose voices have been stilled or no, people no longer listen. We pray, holy God, for those in our life who are ill, for those who are recovering from surgery, for those who are struggling with their mental health. Let your healing flow once more like a mighty river so that all may find their way to a new life with you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we're reminded of the many ways that God answers prayers, we respond in kind with our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this humble offering. May it multiply and serve your needs. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we make our way from Palm Sunday to the rest of Holy Week, we go out into the world singing hymn number 230, Go to Dark Gethsemane. Receive the benediction. Go now in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.